Project 141 was a very important milestone for the French tank industry. The first attempts to design a new universal combat platform date back to 1945, but the work took 13 years to complete. In time, the vehicle developed through that project received two more names, the M4 and the one that most people know today, the AMX-50. In War Thunder, tanks of this series can be found at ranks 4 and 5 of the French tech tree. Today we're going to discuss their playstyle, which is unorthodox but effective nevertheless. Let's take a look at the early version first, the AMX M4. Its sloped frontal armor, overlapping road wheels, and the engine deck are visually very reminiscent of German Panthers and Tigers, which were in fact a strong inspiration to French engineers. And it wasn't just about the looks. The frontal armor of the M4 and the frontal defenses of the Panther are almost identical. Both tanks can shrug off hits by APHE rounds fired from a Soviet 85mm and the American 90mm guns. And you can survive hits by even more powerful shells if they connect with your armor at a favorable angle. Just try not to expose the corners of your upper frontal plate, thin side armor, and the lower part of the turret. The crew inside is sitting right in front of an autoloader, one of the main selling points of French tanks. With the first stage ammo rack, which totals seven shells, it takes the autoloader less than seven seconds to reload the gun. This means that when it comes to fire rate, the M4 is superior to most of its opponent. But there is a caveat. Its APC shells are unable to pierce the frontal defenses of tanks like the Soviet T-44. If you run into those, aim for the lower glacis, turret cheeks, or their side armor. Finally, the M4 is very mobile. A 1,000 horsepower German engine allows the tank to move at up to 51 kilometers per hour on a good road, and at up to 19 kilometers per hour in reverse. Needless to say, that's pretty amazing for a tank with that much armor and such a big gun. As a result, it's as good at flanking as it is at frontline fights. There's no need to wait half the battle for a good chance to strike. The M4 has enough survivability and firepower to bring the fight to the enemy. If it looks like you can force another tank into a duel, just do it. Your superior fire rate gives you a lot of edge. The next tank of the family is the one you're probably most familiar with. The AMX-50, equipped with the TOA-100 turret, is basically an upgraded version of the M4. Apart from reinforced frontal armor, its main new features are its turret and its armament. 100mm APC BC rounds can pierce the turrets of the T-54 or the Tiger II right from the front, all while it takes the gun only 4 seconds to reload thanks to the use of an autoloader. Effectively, this variant has double the firepower of the previous model and can fight several opponents at once. Things were already in motion to accept the tank into service, but then the realities of NATO standardization agreements forced France to reconsider their plans. The AMX-50 had only one brief moment of glory when it was proudly displayed during the 1950 Bastille Day Parade, along with another vehicle on our list, a prototype self-propelled gun known as the AMX-50 Foch. This heavy tank destroyer featured very sturdy frontal armor, which was capable of withstanding hits even by early sub-caliber rounds. The Falk was also reasonably mobile, and armed with a 120mm gun that could fire 23kg APBC rounds. It's a very effective vehicle, but it requires a bit of getting used to. Your gun has only 5 degrees of gun depression, limiting your positioning options, and it takes 15 long seconds to reload, which means that you can't afford to miss. Your gunner sights won't win any prizes as well, but at least the vehicle has decent commander sights and a good rangefinder. On the Folk, we suggest that you should alternate between sniping targets from afar and going out and being more aggressive. It's okay to be passive some of the time, but if you see an opening, don't hesitate to move in and capitalize on it. To get the most out of your APBC rounds, aim at the flat parts of the enemy's armor. There aren't that many vehicles that can survive a good hit from the Folk. Maybe the Soviet IS-6, but that's about it. Then there are the last vehicles of the AMX-50 series, the Surblindi and the Surbassi. 
Both are so heavy that mobility-wise they are more like slower tanks akin to the British Century. Both late models are armed with the same 120mm cannon as the Falk, but their autoloader first stage ammo rack can hold 19 rounds. All in all, we suggest that you should pack no more than 20 rounds. This way, there won't be any additional ammo storage in the hull. The late AMX-50 variants feel a lot like the original M4, just with more firepower. At the same time, they have the same problems with their optics as the Falk, namely a pretty mediocre zoom on the gunner's sight and a decent zoom on the commander's sight. You have to be very deliberate with your actions. Engage enemies at medium range, making full use of the well-protected upper part of the turret and the impressive fire rate of your gun. Basically, your MO is all about careful positioning and the methodical one-by-one -one elimination of your targets. It's also worth noting that each of these two late models has its own unique flavor. For instance, the Surbassé can deploy smoke screens, which provides a lot of tactical flexibility, and the Surblindé is equipped with an additional 20mm German autocannon. The AMX-50 Surblindé was made in the first half of the 1950s, but it was almost immediately dropped due to its enormous weight. The Surbassé was ready in 1958, but compared to its MBT contemporaries, it looked like a guest from a distant past. So the French made a difficult decision to drop it as well, and went with the AMX-30 instead. That's why the first ever AMX-50 tanks went straight to museums where they remain to this very day. In War Thunder, though, you can easily pull them out of their retirement and test them in combat. And you know what? They're a force to be reckoned with, fully capable of holding their own against tanks from other countries and even more advanced vehicles. Which variant of the AMX-50 do you prefer? Tell us in the comments below.